part of the uh, of the Roxbury Board of School Directors, uh, starting at 6.33. Uh, first order of business is public comment. Anyone online? Not seen anyone, okay. We will move to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move we approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. Any discussion? Could I pull the ESSER project letter? You certainly do may. I need a new, do we need a new motion for that? You do need a new motion for that. I amend my motion, so I will uh, move that we approve the consent agenda minus the ARPA ESSER project approval letter. Second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mia, do you want to? Sure. I just had a couple of questions. I think this is the case, but this is the amount that we've been seeing for this project, right? That hasn't changed? And um, why are we sending a letter to the Agency of Education just for this project? Why not You're the whole thing? We're going to see one for each project. Oh, it was okay. a nice added surprise that we didn't, we didn't know we had to do until just recently. Okay. For each of the projects out of ARPESSER, it's just a federal requirement that's unique to ARPESSER. Okay. We believe, right? Yeah. I, it may be something that we will have to do for every cons every significant construction project, but definitely for our ESSER because it's in the grant management system. And it's just this one right now because this is the one we want to try to do this summer. Right. So the others, not a huge rush. Right. Okay. But you'll probably see similar letters Got for it. the other projects. Got it. And then isn't it that, is there a point at which the board needs to approve the plan, the whole plan, or no? That's where the contradiction comes, gotcha. because no, and then we have to do these. Got it. Which makes it appear as if the board needs to approve the project. So that's the, the slight contradictory yeah. messaging that we've gotten here that we had a little discussion about. Yeah. Um, OK. That's helpful for, so we'll see many, see several yeah. of these. Yeah. <laughs> it's also not that you can do anything about this. It's hard to. Uh, do these in a one off, like to be looking at and saying, yes, great, in a one off way, it's much better. At, anyway, to look at it as a whole picture. Yes. It feels more <laughs> like a, making a real decision. Anyway, um, okay, I just wanted to thank you, wanted to clear up that confusion I had. Uh, so I move to approve the um, ESSER project letter um, about the MSMS. Um, space. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, hey, Jim, I, yes. I just want to uh, know that I'm here, so I would like my votes to count, uh, just because I had my right, my hand raised and it was not noted. But I so I approve it, even though I had a conversation to have. But um, so if you can just. I'm sorry that I'm not feeling well to be there. I don't want to give you germs, but um, if you can just make sure that I'm here. I know it's hard to be hybrid, but thank you. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think that when there's just a universal I like that, it just gets counted as everyone's saying I, but, but thank you for noting that. Um, American Zach, uh, student update? Yeah, so um, I believe you showed up on and I'm Libby, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do, um... Hold is, on one second. Yeah. Okay. I'm working on it. Anna is the... Anna is the host right now. <laughs> hey, Anna, you on? You're the host right now. You got to share it or give me... Give me uh, host duties. Oh, got it. Okay. Hold on. I like the ivy. Yeah. It's a nice touch. <laughs> Zach does all the design. Zach does the design. It's like Zach I love the Ivy. 
All righty. So good evening, everyone. Our presentation agenda is to share a few district events that have either occurred in the past month or are upcoming, give an update on our progress with the MHS vaccination grant, share the feedback we heard from our MSMS listening session, uh, provide an update on our, our continuing curriculum discussions, and finally tie everything together as they relate to our next steps as student school board representatives. So um, let's get into some current events that have occurred in our community. So the first event um, that we have is on Saturday, there's the Race Against Racism, um and there's a, there are a lot more pictures that i couldn't fit um but they're singing dancing and there was the um running or walking option and a lot of people showed up it was great another really great event that happened on friday was the was the climate rally where hundreds of students from across the state converged on the state house to protest climate change and this was also a very successful event, and it was great to see all the, the youth speakers and just the other events that took place at the climate rally. There were lots of events that were there, right? Not just the protest piece. It was, yeah, there were Student there were booths set up, there yeah. were speakers. There, yeah. There were there was a bunch of things. And then MHS's prom is happening um, at BCFA on May 21st. There is a really pretty poster that I could not find a picture of, um, but it's happening. <laughs> it's just in the hallways, so you get to see it. It is pretty cool. Okay, so um, our update on the MHS vaccination grant is that the ideas we heard from both our outreaches to students, oh, from, from our outreaches to students over the past few months have been trimmed down into what we do as some of the most realistic and overall beneficial ideas that could occur with this money to the MHS community. And so these ideas were spending the, spending the vaccination funds on new toasters and microwaves for the cafeteria, which are certainly, certainly needed, as well as some sustainable outdoor furniture that can be used by everyone in, in the school community as well as at least one having birth view. <laughs> I think we can handle it. Yeah. Um, I'll get in touch with you about right. getting in touch with them to get the what you want. Right. I've been talking with Renee. I talked with her today about it. Good. And okay. these, these were the ideas that she, I think, okay. Awesome. So, yeah. And just so the board knows, if I can interrupt and interject. Sorry, America, I'm doing that a lot. She's All good. Um, UES is... Uh, getting portable soccer goals as well as a goggle ball pit. Um, and maybe something else that's smaller, like a snow cone maker. I think they're getting a snow cone maker that the kids wanted. <laughs> and MSMS, the soccer goals actually might be at MSMS. Um, new outdoor, they also want a goggle ball pit. Um, oh, merry go round. UES won the merry go round too. Um, and so the Gaga Ball Pit was the big seller at UES and MSMS. Is UES getting a merry-go-round? I believe so, yeah. That's of some time. sort. Or teeter-totters? Oh. Some sort of playground equipment. Huh. I know, I thought those were like illegal now. <laughs> Not, <laughs> they are the way, we're excited. They are the way we just took off the army as playground. That was, <laughs> that was very illegal. But it would not be what we imagine as children that were like death, death machines. <laughs> or the um, most fun thing. <laughs> Whichever way you want to look at it. Sorry, go ahead. Um, and then we had our MSMS listening session. Um, we had one at the high school and we're, we had one at the middle school now. now. Um, and we're working on one at the elementary school. But a lot of the feedback we have, there's a whole document, but the main points were that students wanted um, something like Crafter's Edge, some sort of like events and sort of um, community building activities for like an eighth grade trip and fundraising and events. Um, students wanted more extracurriculars and more opportunities for sort of student-led things and leadership skills. Um, and a lot of 
what people talked about was feeling a sort of um, like a separation between even like not even just like grades, but like the, there's there's different teams, and so between those different teams, um, they've been feeling really separated, which is likely it's likely a COVID thing um, in terms of like safety protocol. Um, but something that was stressed on a lot was like having more events and sort of community building activities. Um, and then something, the last sort of feedback we had, which is um, around the same subject is the way that classes are scheduled makes it very difficult for students um, to travel like between floors. They have their class ends at a time and their next class immediately starts at that same time. So there's no like five minutes for them to go to the bathroom, get their stuff. And some of their classes are like on the, the very bottom floor and then up two floors the next like period. So there's a lot of talk about <laughs> thinking of a way to restructure that and making it more accessible for everyone. I also just wanted to add that um... We are not by bringing the or the feedback that we heard from the MSMS listening session. We're not proposing that the board necessarily take any action on any of the things that we heard or that the students express. But we think that as student representatives ourselves, it is important to show the board and the public how students across the district, but right now at MSMS, are feeling and we're feeling about certain issues. With that said. As, as Zach just mentioned, we heard a significant amount of feedback on a wide variety of issues at MSMS. And the mo they're, they fall into many different categories, but there were three overarching themes with, I would say, most of the feedback that we heard. And these themes were a lot of behavioral challenges there, uh, a sense of educational disconnect, which we saw also at the, the high school through just uh, what many students view as an unengaging like learning environment, mm -hmm. and also a, a, a sense of or a need for more learning support. And one example is in the second in the second part of the feedback slide, where students have a time for support with their teachers and SSTs, but SSTs aren't really supportive for students because SSTs are really more of a time for just how I don't know how just just how they're set up. They're not very helpful for students because it's either they're not learning what they are were learning in class might be something completely different or it's just they're not getting the support that they need perhaps the teacher uh, isn't helping them out with some kind of area they just put like a prompt on the wall this uh, specific example we heard that in SSTs a teacher might just put a, a writing prompt on a wall for example based on completely different on what they were learning in class and just have the students fill out those writing prompts. And that's not really a very supportive way to reinforce what students were learning in class. So there's just this kind of sense that SSTs are not very supportive for students and that there is a need at the middle school for more supportive time. And the SST for just acronym sake yeah. is student support. Right. Um, it's basically an intervention block um, right now that's being in the process of being redesigned. I think that's uh, very probably a good thing. Very needed from what yeah. we heard in the <laughs> session. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we will also share the full notes that we took from this listening session with the board for, for any members who want to look at those. Because there's a lot more than just what we listed, but what we listed on our presentation gets at most of what we heard. And then um, we have um, had uh, we've had two meetings with the curriculum director um, because a lot of the feedback we've gotten um, at the high school and also at the middle school, but more so at the high school. Um, what has been about sort of curriculum and make sure making sure everything is up to date, supportive and engaging um, for students. And so we're going to continue to have those regular meetings um, and work on uh, making everything accessible for people. And uh, yesterday, uh, America and I met with Emma um, to discuss some of our future goals. And some of that was around 
uh, curriculum and um, again, making it accessible for people. And a lot of what we as student representatives are gonna do right now is doing research on what improvements might look like um, in regards to curriculum. Alrighty, so moving forward, um, we are going to continue researching how best we feel that we can improve the curriculum in the ways that we have heard from students over the course of our outreaches to them. And we're also going to continue assisting in any way with the MHS vaccination grant, making sure that that funding is like just shown in, in, this, in this field. Additionally, we are going to continue to support students and, and in ensuring that their voices are heard both at, at these board meetings and just in general throughout their educational experiences this year and so forth. Um, and finally, we're, we're, we plan to hold listening sessions at UES and RBS over the next month or so, hopefully. But yeah, that's, that was a presentation. The, um, the, 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 the visioning committee attempted to facilitate an activity to engage the RBS kids mm -hmm. um, to talk about sort of vision and values types of things. It was hard. Um, and so if you guys are going to go there, you should you should consult with myself and Nathan if, if in sort of maybe some of what we learned, some of the some of the some of the challenges that we ran into maybe can can make your your attempt more successful. Yeah, we, we certainly appreciate that. It was hard. Um, I can chat with you too. It was, it was little fun. Ones are a little little <laughs> ones are a little different. Yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> it was I, fun, but getting to the actual values as opposed to like, I want to be a fireman. Was, <laughs> you know, that's the, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what went on or what questions you asked students at RBS, but at the middle school specifically, we did not have much trouble at all getting a lot of good feedback from the students. So. Yeah, I mean, well, maybe we should figure out a way to have a meeting. I mean, you're on the visioning committee as well. If we, if what we learned can help you, you know, accomplish your goals, then right. that's good. I will offer my child if you want to pre-try any questions. Isn't she five? Six. Six. Oh, she's ready. Got a lot of ideas. <laughs> I just have to thank you guys both so much for putting this together for the board. It's such a flavor we have not had before, and you've already brought so much perspective. And I, I don't think, for example, middle school students get the opportunity to have that sort of conversation with older students that they look up to. And it looks like, just looking at this, I'm fascinated. Obviously, I have a middle schooler, but um, they seem like pretty reasonable, like, big things, like pretty clear observations of things that adults can maybe do something about. So, mm -hmm. and I don't think they get a lot of chances to have that kind of feedback. Like I'm seeing things about like the bathrooms and the hallways, like very logistical things that all send a message to students. So just really appreciate you guys doing all this legwork between me. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, further questions for Mark? I have a question. Oh, um, I have three questions. <laughs> okay. So I also just want to thank both Merrick and Zach. Um, I think it's incredibly valuable what you're bringing to the board in your role as student representatives, and I'm deeply appreciative of it. Um, my first question is sort of like a board question slash Libby question about the toasters and microwaves. <laughs> I wonder if that's if there's something that we could do to spend fund balance or something else on toasters and microwaves so that they can have a little bit more in their budget for hummingbird feeders <laughs> and, not and be, outdoor furniture. Yeah. Outdoor and not be like using this like grant. It just feels like I know that that's, that is a functional thing in a cafeteria that feels like maybe we could help offset that cost. I think we can look at the list. That's the first I've seen it. So let's, okay. let's look at the list and we'll figure out what. Okay. Um, my second thing is about that transition time. I just want to sort, sort of mm -hmm. punctuate that because I was just attending a workshop with Joelle Van Lent mm -hmm. through my, my job outside of my role on the board. Um, and she has done a lot of work with this school district. She's a psychologist. Um, and she specializes in sort of like child psychology as it relates to education. She does a lot of consulting work and stuff. She's um, a very well-respected 
voice, and she spent a lot of time on this topic of transition time, and especially sort of post-COVID, that in a world where behavior issues are on the rise and just um, emotional sort of stress levels in, in children are higher than they have been in the past, that building in transition time was like a big topic of, of this workshop. And so that can either be done in like the scheduling, you know, master schedule type of way, or it could be done also just sort of in the, the cultural norm of classes would be that like the first 10 minutes or something would be set aside for transition time. So that if someone's trying to get from upstairs to, down, to a downstairs class, that it, they wouldn't be like late. Anyway, so I'll just punctuate that as like, feels like an important thing to consider. Um, and then the other question was about the Roxbury Village School listening session. And I wonder um, if you and Zach might consider also holding like a special Roxbury student listening session at both the middle school and the high school. Um, you might have better access to those kids that way. Or you might, like I don't know what Rhett's input would be, but um, or Kristen, but it might be nice to make a special time at the middle school to try to harness that voice there for the kids that travel from Roxbury or here at the high school. Like opposed to just a traditional RVS listening session, or yeah, like or both, yeah, all sure. of them. So like there's there's RV there's the RVS school and the kids up to fourth grade that attend that school, but then there's RVS community members that come to that are Main Street Middle School students or Montpelier High School students and they might have a different perspective. Um, and it might be interesting to have them all in the room at the same time, you know, kind of giving like a, having like a Roxbury specific listening session. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I can uh, talk about that. I think that sounds like a really great idea. I'm not sure how many, I think it might be about like maybe 10, five to 10 kids per grade or something like that come from Roxbury. I don't know what the numbers are. No, less? Maybe five to 10 kids 30, total. 32 kids total at MSMS and NHS. Okay. So maybe it could even be combined, those middle school and high school, but sort of for those Roxbury kids. Yeah. Was, was that, that was two questions. Did you? Well, the second one wasn't a question. It was more of a sort of snapping at the transition time thing. Okay. Well, I just wanted to comment on the transition time. We, like me and Zach, asked the middle schoolers during our listening session if they thought that the transition time that we have at the high school, which is five minutes in between each class, if they would be supportive of that. And they all said that they very much were in support of that. And said that instead of having their class end right at 9.55 and their next class starting right at 9.55. So. Yeah. <clears throat> and your acknowledgement of like that type of thing is not under our right. purview as board members, but it's good to be listening and hearing and trying to be responsive. Well, alrighty. Thank you, guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> um, next is board discussion, so finance committee report, and I don't know if. Yeah, I can um, provide a quick update on hey, the. Sorry to just add. Can I make a request to add another item to this piece of the agenda, which is from the equity committee to request some money for the first survey monkey? We can. To, I just wanted to add it to the agenda after we hear the report. Yeah, I think we can do that. Um, I think Tech was supposed to add stuff at the beginning. Sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll throw it in. I won't be much help in that department. Uh, so you should have received in your packet, and then the finance committee just heard um, the walking through the FY22 third quarter report um, that, as always, has a really helpful sort of summary about um, the shape that we're in at this point in the fiscal year um, and where expenses and revenues are falling um, and the sort of interplay with the various federal funds that are coming in and out. Um, on the second page of the report, um, it looks like uh, it's, there's a table and then there's a piece called fund balance information. Um, this has been updated to reflect the decisions the board has made recently to add the, um, to assign or commit some of the fund balance to the track project and um, possibly net zero study. And then it also uh, sort of delineates the different upgrades that are also um, being used in the sort of set aside and that we would continue to have 
over 2.5% of the budget sort of in an unreserved fund balance, but that we feel like we're in better shape in that we have committed a fair amount. So our, our fund balance is lower, which is good. We don't want it to get too out of control and high. Um, I don't know if anyone else on the committee, Red or Anna Kit, had anything else you guys wanted to add? Um, Any questions? One other thing that the overall um, we're expecting about $100,000 um, of surplus. So that will get added to the fund balance as well. So uh, right now it's 130 or 652 or 653. So we'll potentially have 750. Which is still over our 2%? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to be, you know, instead of 132 2%. over, it'll be 230, something mm -hmm. over. Um, a lot of the, the expenses are going up. Uh, so the expenditure, uh, the total line is 26 million and 33,584. So that will go up. But the revenue is going up too because of SF funds and other revenue sources. So most of it will balance out, but we'll end up with $100,000. Um, in green. And are the kind of gray shaded lines of those kind of the new commitments? Because I know that one is the track, which is from the last meeting, and then the potential yep. at zero, yep. which was mentioned at the last meeting. Okay. Um, Any questions for finance committee? I have a, I have a few um, about the that set aside. Um, the, that was done just after the last meeting. The set aside, sorry, I should be more specific. The set aside for the net zero study and the digital control system. Correct. Those, those, are, those, those are new. highlighted items are new mm -hmm. since the last report. Yeah. And then what's the threshold? I mean, I can see there's a big difference between $50,000 and $1.5 million, but do we have a sort of threshold where we would say actually that takes, it makes more sense for the board to make the decision than for the administration to make the decision? But yeah, what's the number? You have I mean, I would, I would say if it's if it's under, usually under maybe $25,000, then it probably wouldn't be significant enough. There is an item on here that's 15000 but that was because it was a, an item that failed and we had to do it, and the only way to do it was to put it on this list. Um, condensing oh, the condensing unit? unit? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but typically, if it's under, say, $25,000, I wouldn't be looking to call it out because this could end up being like an, an infinite list of stuff. Sure. Um, I would look to see if it's just within the execution of our budget we can handle smaller things. Okay. You know, like if somebody says, oh, we really need this $1,000, then if we could look at somebody's budget and realize we probably have the flexibility that we could use, save a thousand here, and we'll just cover it. Right. And I wouldn't even put it on there. Right. This is more like big things that have, that have failed or, or high priority topics that I want to make sure the board is aware of. Um, a lot of the stuff that's on here is facilities related to energy conservation or in, the, in, the term, in terms of the condensing unit, something that failed. Uh -huh. um, so it's really, if it's significant enough, I would put it on this list because I want to be transparent to the board and right. to make sure you are aware of it. But if it's something more that's noise level, then we will try to sort it out ourselves without getting it on here. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say if, if you're looking for a rule of thumb, I would say maybe $25,000, uh -huh. something like that. And then just, hey, Zach and Amanda, can you hear Grant OK? So-so. Okay. I saw a thumbs up and a so-so. OK. Just want to make sure um, you can keep up with that. Yeah, it's a little far. OK. I put my headphones, but it's still a little far. OK. Sorry. Um, and then obviously the board voted for the $1.5 What would be the threshold that we would say, actually, this is more of a board decision than then you know you you did the set aside for the fifty thousand. I'm not opposed to you doing it. I'm just curious to know like where between fifty thousand or a hundred thousand for the ventilation system upgrade, for example, and one and a half million. Do we have one where we would say actually it makes more sense for the board to have a discussion about this and make the decision? 
Well, we did the 50,000 too. That was part of our motion for the track, is we also added the 50,000 for the study. No, we didn't. Uh, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't. No? no? We talked about it, but. Yeah, That's we did. I, I, nice. I mentioned that I would add it in. Uh, OK. So okay. In that case, it's not really a dollar threshold that we're talking about. It's terminology. OK. Committed fund balance means the board took action right. to commit it. So even if there was something that we said was $10,000, if the board took action to do it, I would put it under committed yep. and you would have to vote for it. Um, these unreserved, what I'm calling kind of set-asides, just means that it's not committed, the board didn't take action, it isn't assigned, meaning the, it wasn't voted on by the public. Right. It's, it's basically just something else that we know we're going to overspend and I want to want to make sure you're aware of it. Yeah. So um, assigned means voters have voted on it. Committed means the board has voted on it. Uh -huh. Anything else is just things that have raised the level that I want to make sure you're aware of what we're doing. And I wouldn't want to replace the condensing unit for, for $15,000 and not even let you know you're doing yep. that. Yep. Um, so it's, it's more terminology and or threshold. And does it count, does it, one of the things we were talking about in the last meeting was the concern that with too big of a surplus, the state could come in and say, oh no, actually it doesn't look like you need that money. Do the things that are listed under unreserved set-asides, do those count toward, nope, actually we really do need it, don't take it from us, would that, or could the state come in and take that money? The, um, the audit most likely, we have a new auditor, it's coming on board. So the audit will break it up into those categories. Okay. It will show assigned, which is what we're anticipating to use for future revenue sources, which is in essence voted on because the public allows that. Um, committed is what you assigned and, or what you voted for. Right. And then it'll say like unreserved and it would be the balance of this, which is probably on the order of about a million dollars maybe. This stuff, all the things that are under unreserved right here right. are about a million dollars. Probably. I mean, yeah, yeah right. roughly. It's about a million dollars. I'm not worried about having an unreserved fund balance mm -hmm. of a million dollars. That, that to me isn't an, an enormous target for somebody to, to look at and try to pull from. But don't we have an unreserved of 1.6 something right now? Because the, the 652 are you counting? Oh, are you counting that in the one? Yeah, million? yeah. Sorry. Including okay. that, it would be about 1.1, 1. 1. 1, 1. 1.2. Got it. Okay. Thank, sorry. Yeah. I was confused. So I think that's a reasonable number to have. Okay. It's unreserved. It's not going not gonna to raise eyebrows or make anybody take notice of. Mm -hmm. If it was the whole 3.8 million, I think that's a different story. That, that okay. to me is a significant amount of money and risk that yep. if something happens with, say, the legislature or something else, that could be at risk. Right. But I think if the numbers are around a million, considering our annual budget is 26 million, I think it's unreasonable. Great. So just to clarify the answer that we're hearing, because I'm not 100% clear, is um, the question on does the board need to take action on any, is there any threshold where it requires board action to approve spending uh, fund balance? No. As an individual contract, though, we can't actually, like, I could put anything on here, and as long as I call it out and make you aware of it, then that's fine. But if, say, this, these heat pumps for 75000 when we actually go to buy those, we can't just sign off on that document and that right. contract. You will see it and approve that contract. So that dollar amount, I believe, is 50000 That's what I remember, too. That's in policy. It's in policy. Right. Yeah. right. So if there's a contract that we're going to award for $50,000, mm -hmm. you would see it, whether it's coming from fund balance or whether it's even just part of a regular budget. Yeah. But if there it. wasn't a contract, if it was like we're buying $50,000 worth of toasters and microwaves. <laughs> That you probably wouldn't see. Then we wouldn't see that. <laughs> um, like like um, computer devices. Okay. It's more like the... One big... If we buy 100 computer devices for $500 each, you're probably not going to see that for $50,000. So when the, when the board approves these um, finance reports, they're sort of, in essence, like this is the opportunity for the board to sort of see your ideas around what 
needs to be spent and how. And if there was some like major alarm bells being rung, this would be the opportunity yes. to bring it right. up. And that's why I try to make sure I highlight what's new from the last report. Yep. Yeah. It's a new opportunity yep. to say, whoa, I don't know that we want to do this. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's at any time you could push back and say, you know, we approve this, but we want this to be removed from the I think Amanda has a hand up. Thank you. Um, so going back to the $50,000, and I'm sorry, I missed some of it. Um, I couldn't really hear. But um, so is there, do we still need to commit those 50,000 because, because we didn't? Um, we kind of just wanted in grant. You said last time that, um, uh, sorry, my brain is totally fogged. I'm not feeling so well today. Um, you said that, um, that, you know, we could just add it, but you could also just take it away if the administration decides to use that money somewhere else. So is there, so the question I guess to the board is, do we feel like we wanna commit as a board to that, those 50 grand, so that that is actually in the audit as money that we're committing to the net series study? Um, and before anybody takes that on, I would say a couple things. Not only do I highlight when I put something on this list, I would highlight if I was taking something off. I don't just on my own decide to do something. The reason why I was against committing that is for everything that you put on the, com you, that you commit, that's something that we will have to track with the auditors on exactly how much of that did we spend this year and how much do we need to adjust it for the audit so that for example, if we say 50000 for potential net zero study, if we spend $600, then I need to make sure to tell the auditors, here's the receipt that we spent $600, and now you need to reduce this committed amount from $50,000 to $49,400, and we have to go through that level of detail of tracking it, which for the track, the high school track, that's a significant thing, and we need to do that. But if it's something lower than that, I just didn't want to have to go through the extra work of reconciling every line item on the fund balance with the auditors each year. I will tell you that we don't put anything on or take anything off of this list without, without briefing you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to respond to Amanda's because I had that same question right after the, the, the last meeting. And um, it feels like right now, given we don't know, you know, I, I understand the, the net zero study is a study to figure out things we don't know, but we're not quite even sure what we would study yet. There might come a point where I, as a board member, would feel like it would make sense for us as a board to make that commitment, and I'm not sure we're there. That This is just, you know, I don't believe we're quite there yet, but especially because this is one of the you know, top five, I would probably say, issues that we've been hearing about from the community over the course of the last year. Um, this does feel like something that rises to the level, regardless of the do dollar amount, that the board probably should vote on soon. We might just not be there yet. I definitely really appreciate the context you're giving us about, well, if it's a $600 receipt, then we have all this tracking we have to do. There might be a point where we are able to make that commitment to spend that money, and then we would spend it in larger chunks. So maybe there's less tracking to do, but um, well, probably I think we not go there right now. Too. We can make sure the uh, facilities and energy committee is is tracking where that fund is going, and then a study like this is going to be something we're going to contract out. So yeah. that contract will come to the board, and we'll approve that contract. So I think we can kind of exercise oversight that way and avoid the audit problem. At least that's kind of my thought on how it would work. And we did, a few years back, we had several things on a committed list. And it, it got a little tricky because then we were also having to adjust. And every time you adjust, like say we, say we, we did go forward with this and we awarded a contract for this study and it was 45000 then I would have to have everybody vote on reducing the committed fund balance from 50000 to 45000 and change it, and then I would have to document that with the auditors to, to show that we reduced it by 5000 Whereas if it's just on here, then we can make those adjustments, and I can adjust this amount and update it every quarter to let you know how things are going. 
I mean, at some point, if it's a firm number and we're pretty sure that that's locked in and you really feel it's important enough, then yes, obviously, you have the ability to commit whatever you want. Okay. Um, but I, I would hold off on at least for a while. And maybe it's something that you don't ever have to do, but if you do, I would hold off for a little while at least. Okay. Uh, Amanda? Yeah, I guess I, I will defer to the Energy Committee um, uh, and the Facilities Committee. And I would like to maybe for in the near future agenda to bring back, um, you know, like the mayor and Kate Stevenson and all the people that are working on the net zero in the town that have um, just to kind of go over things for the new board members too, since the presentation was in March of last year. Um, I, I think it will be really great to kind of like see the big picture again and remind ourselves um, about that. And I do, I do, you know, uh, I, I did bring it up in the policy committee, but um, just like we did make that commitment to the students that we will look at the policy. And so um, hopefully we'll be taking that up soon. Great. Yeah, no, we will definitely be hearing more than zero. Um, Anything else from the finance committee? Thank you so much. Um, then we have to approve the third quarter report. I move to approve the quarter three financial report. I have a second. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Amanda, is that an aye? She's nodding. Oh, yeah, it's not She's odd. nodding. <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, great. Um, and then we also need um, action to make a donation to the Vermont Coalition for Student Equity. Do I have a motion to take that action? Um, I'll make a motion to donate $5,000 just to start the conversation somewhere to the uh, Vermont Coalition for Student Equity. So, second. I'll I second, second that. Oh. <laughs> Let's. I've already seconded once tonight. So um, Let's spread it around. Discussion? Um, I have more questions for you, Grant. Because <laughs> um, it looks like from the report that it, I, my guess is that this would come from the superintendent and school board line item. Is that the right place to? Uh, I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's a donation to the Vermont, the Coalition for Vermont Student Equity, which the board voted to become a member of the coalition, I don't know, two and a half months ago. And so it's a nonprofit organization that we're considering making a donation to, almost sort of like membership. So pain. like a VSA membership? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess it would go into the school board dues and fees for school board. Um, we would have, I'd have to get some contact information on exactly who the vendor is. Right. We would have to establish them and get the I-9s or whatever we need to make sure that we can <coughs> establish them as a vendor in the system. I just wasn't sure what it was about. Or okay. The purpose, I guess, is what I was trying to figure out. Right. It's a coalition of school districts that were um, I don't want to use the word lobbying, but they were working they were really sure. hard. No, they were definitely lobbying. <laughs> yeah, hard, lobbying but, um, yeah. To, to um, have school district voices heard for the waiting study. So they had testimony. They had a lobbying firm. They were tracking the legislation and sort of strategizing on how to influence the conversation about where the weights ended up. Um, I wasn't sure what, the, like, the VSA is something that is always going to be there and always has work that's going on. It, it sounds like this is specific to some Shoot. legislative action that, yeah. is, isn't it already done? It's the well, it's close. Yeah, the governor still needs to sign it, but I, I don't know if they still have work to do. I, yeah. I don't know. Uh, pick up Amanda. I will say that it goes a little farther than that. Um, it's a coalition of uh, school board members and school boards who have signed on to it, uh, but that have a very specific equity focus, which is why the pupil waiting was really um, key. So I think that 
once the the bill passes, there's going to be an implementation and accountability pieces around. So this is not going to be a one and one done. I think this is a long term kind of thing to ensure that the voices of those school board members, school boards that have, you know, um, ELO students in this case, that was a lot of the advocacy that was happening, that it continues to have um, a very important part of the conversation around funding for schools and all of that. So I don't think it's just like, this is the bill and that's it. They're looking at other education pieces around education quality standards and how that looks into ELL you know, students and how to support that. So um, I think there, you know, it's not just like the one thing that they will be looking at and uh, getting, uh, asking for feedback from us as a school board. Yeah. Um, just mechanics wise, I think at 5,000, I don't think I would add it in here. What I would do is I would, if you voted to do this, I would probably charge it against the superintendent or um, the school board superintendent line. Yep. And then we would just track that. And at the end of the year, if we're over, that might be the reason why. Right. You know, something like that. Um, at five thousand dollars, it's not gonna. It, it's not significant enough that I would raise the visibility of right. my balance line. Right. So I would say that's completely up to the school board. If at some point this is something that you think is a recurring requirement, I think it's something that we would want to add into the budget process. Obviously, 22 is done and 23 is also done. So then this year and next year, if you wanted to do this, it would be something that we would purposely be overspending and just have to cover. Mm -hmm. And then if it's something that's long-term in FY24, we would want to build it into a budget. Um, so I would say that's the board's decision. If you tell me to do that, I will do it. I just would need somebody to give me some contact information mm -hmm. from, you know, like if this was BSA, I'd say, okay, who's the BSA contact that I need to contact to get, we will need something from them, like some kind of an invoice thing to send us that we can pay it, and we'll need paperwork and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So my, I, I guess it's just, it's totally up to the board if you want to do this or not. And if you do, then I'll just work with Libby to get the contact information so that we can make that. Great. So my questions, I do still have questions about the math of it. Are we, <laughs> sorry, Grant. <laughs> Are we, If would $5,000 put us over budget? It was hard uh, for that line item. That was hard to tell from the quarter three report. Um. It's already, uh, it's already uh, the noted to be over budget, so we'll. Right, it's, we'll, but then paid back budget. from ESSER funds and Fund balance, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you, it's going to be over, the expenses are going to be over. Right. We will cover those from fund, either fund balance or from uh, federal funds that we anticipate. I would say, if, once again, if you hold my feet to the fire, the net out of school board and superintendent, I think you would be pretty close to level mm -hmm. in that position if you, if you, look at the over expense, but then you factor in the revenues that are going to cover that, I'd say we're going to be pretty close okay. to level. Um, might that one single line end up being slightly over budget if we spend another 5000 Maybe, but not anything. right now I don't. You do not seem worried. I'm no. <laughs> Great. No. No. Okay. Not, not for that. As long as the decimal doesn't change places, <laughs> five thousand. You know, I don't, I'm not really concerned. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, oh, all's in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, so, so worked on conflict resolution with the Restorative Justice no, Center. Then, then there's my problematic small edition of the oh, survey yes. monkey. Survey monkey. Um, so a little context here is that the Equity Committee is very close to finishing the questions for the school climate survey. And um, survey monkey looks like the best place for us to hold this because the back end of it is much more robust than Google survey. And um, there is another layer of anonymity um, when it is not in Google, which you know we all have the Gmail addresses. 
I don't know exactly how that layer of anonymity works, but anyway, or like how the if you don't use your email, it's not um, anonymous. But that is, you know, what we're learning. Um, and so the amount, Amanda, it's either twenty-five a month or seventy-five a month. Can you give us the differences with what the yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of levels and graphics and things that we can get with either twenty five dollars or seventy five dollars a month. Um, I will add Mia that the reason why can I add that why oh. we're also using um, yeah please. So we are working to use a a, a national data system. Uh, climate survey in addition to some of the questions we have and um, and they have a whole system that we can just upload uh, our survey very anonymous to be able to track some of the climate statistics with some of national proven things and to be able to give us tools the way to look at it um, which we can explain in, an, in the next meeting um, but when I spoke with the tech people, SurveyMonkey is one of the ones that we can use instead of Google Survey because it's the way that it exports um, all the the system itself. So, um, so yes, yeah, so it's twenty five dollars a month um, or seventy five dollars a month, and we will be using it for you know I think a couple of months to be able to retain the data for. Um, just because then it goes away kind of thing if you don't keep it for a month, for like more than a month. So I can give you the plans and pricing. Um, the $25 a month, um, the $75 in addition to the ones that you get for $25 a month, you get click um, map data visualization, which we don't need, but we have the ability to do multilingual surveys if we wanted to sentiment analysis if we want to do response quality, cross tabs, unlimited filtering, compare rule data and trends, advanced survey logic tools, block randomization, white level surveys, survey completion redirect, um, removing the survey monkey footer and creating private apps with direct APA access, which would we want probably. So um, that's that's that is that. Let's see. So we so just have to, we have to, I guess, approve some money for getting the survey monkey. The board doesn't need to approve a $75 expense. Just tell us out of the board that okay. you, want, yeah. you want survey monkey and we get the survey monkey. Okay, great. <laughs> that's not, that's not, we needed to have a vote for. <laughs> Would it be something okay. that, are we going to have like a year, like do we see using this regularly or would we just kind of get it for a couple of months and then stop? That's right. I think it's just a couple of months and then stop. Okay. And then maybe a couple more months next year and then stop. Okay. Well, it depends, it depends. Uh, if we get the other system, then we will have to use SurveyMonkey. But that's a- Oh, the national one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I would that just. Free, so maybe this is just an FYI. We would like to spend that money. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, great. Sounds good. I mean, and it could be something that we do want to continue if we're, you know, as part of the listening session effort. If there, if we are deciding that we want surveys regularly, you know, maybe it's something that if we really like it, yeah, we could keep using it. Yeah, and just kind of FYI, I mean, expenditures at this level can really just kind of go directly to the big. Okay, good. Good to know. Yes. I wasn't sure if anything that the board wanted to spend money on, we should talk about as a board, but you're, it is not that much money. It's true. If, if it's like a track, yes. If it's like a <laughs> so what's the special for $75 yeah. and $1.5 million? There's, yeah. some, there's some difference there. <sighs> um, so we have the next item on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. Uh, so contract resolution with the Restorative Justice Center. Um, thank you, Grant. Thank you. Um, do you want to do something here, or do you want me to? Or? Sure. I mean, the the quick as um, most folks know, Merrick, Zach, and Sagey, I think maybe were the, were the ones who weren't 
on the board yet. We held a, an initial session with Carol Plant of the community, Montpelier Community Justice Center to just talk through what, um, you know, communication, conflict resolution. It was sort of it, like a, you know, you might think of it as like a 101 if we're thinking in education terms. <laughs> um, and we determined coming out of that that we could use a little bit more work as a board to figure out sort of like what our foundation is. And Jim and I volunteered to get that going and then we um, lost track of that in, for a little bit, but we brought it back, got, we got back to it. And he, this is what I shared with you all this morning is the start of that continuation of that work where we felt like what we could really use some work on is as, an or, as a team of people establishing what our group agreements are. And then also we have this, um, sh Carol shared with us some draft language for what I sort of, in, in other boards that are more like a nonprofit board, they use it as a resolution. I'm not sure if we would necessarily call this a policy, but this could be sort of like the, this is what jump starts the process if and when we have tension that arises that is, you know, shuts down the work of the board. Um, so anyway, that's the, the draft language for that. And we're sharing it with um, the board tonight is just like, here's what we've got so far. We'd love to hear from you on, you know, if you think about putting this to use, what feels really useful to you about it, what feels missing. Um, and then in the hopes that during the board retreat, we continue, can continue to do this work together. And maybe we'll, maybe Jim and I can get it a little bit further before then. Yeah, no, we have a, a few questions which we can, um, you know, for people to think about. Um, I know people got it recently, so we don't necessarily have to delve into this, but um, just to, I wanted to give you an update in FYI and some time to think about it. Sorry, Jim, we're thinking about it, or about, we're thinking about what? <coughs> we're thinking about having the conversation in the retreat or are we giving feedback about the? We need to do a retreat, or we could set aside some time at a meeting, which might be kind of depending on you know, what we use the retreat for. Um, yeah, largely, I think, yeah, kind of think about, like, do like the general crux of the language. Um, yeah, we're also dealing, like, with just the reality is that there's disagreement on boards. Um, and, uh, you know, there's inherently going to be some conflict. Uh, you know, and, and we actually, I think, have the luxury of a board that's generally on the same page. But, you know, we could get a board member who thinks we're a bunch of commie lefties and, you know, is, is elected for the purpose of sticking a spoke in the wheels. Um, and, uh, you know, then, then words like collaboration and, and, you know, conflict. So then, you know, if we have a situation like that, what do we have a conflict process for? Then I think we're probably looking at, you know, situations where we're unable to disagree and have discussions in a, you know, in a polite and respectful manner. Um, you know, and, and, you know, taking it to that level. And what if a board member has no interest in conflict resolution at all? Um, we, we can't, you know, we're, we're stuck with board members until the electorate tells us otherwise. So, um, you know, at some level, this has to be a, a voluntary process and, and our ability to, um, you know, deal with a board member who is conflictual and, and bent on being conflictual is also limited. So, um, yeah, I, I think we have to design a process that acknowledges those realities. So I think for the purposes of tonight, if you have initial thoughts within that context, we'd love to hear them. And then again, you know, hoping to spend some time on the during the retreat on this as well. Yeah, I I have some some initial thoughts, uh, mostly around the questions to answer about um, what what came up for me when I was reading these last questions around the. Um, like, what do you do if someone is 
conflictual. Is that the word? Um, and, you know, part, part of this work around thinking about restorative justice versus punitive systems, which is, you know, a, a lot that was coming around safety when, when um, we were engaged in the community around the, the school safety. And a lot of the conversations and frameworks that we can look at conflict, conflict doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. And thinking about the difference between a punitive system, which in these questions that you ask is what I see, a punitive system where like, what do you do? What is the recourse? Do we you know, take away his attack, uh, this person's assi assignments or censor them or remove them? That is a very punitive system versus a restorative justice system system, which then you'll have, you know, a person that doesn't want to be involved in the process of restorative justice, like what happens then, versus a transformative justice, which is looking at what are the conditions that we are setting there for this conflict to be mature and to be there. So what are looking more at the root causes and the culture and the values that are inherently present? Because if you start from there, I think that the the the, the conversation shifts a little bit more that that person is going to censor themselves and remove themselves um, if the conditions are set. Just as when you have a person who doesn't feel safe or doesn't feel tech, that that could also lead to the censor themselves, the removal of themselves from the place. So it could it, you could have a good member who's not feeling safe, or you can have a bad member who is inherently there to to create a conflict. And both the punitive system doesn't work for neither of them. So what you're creating is like, if we if we move this conversation towards like a transformative justice um, framework that is looking at the root causes and what are the conditions that need to be, what are the seeds that you need to put in the soil so that what you are coming out, the flowers that are coming out are, you know, are being able to create that dialogue, to be able to be transformative, to be able to believe that we are here in, in good conditions. So um, just starting from there, from just thinking about those questions, what it looks like. And I'll be happy to share a little document that we created with an organization that I am part of around these three different models and the questions and the systems that are in place when you start conflict with that. And I am um, particularly int interested in this conflict resolution because it was part of the safety committee recommendations too. And I think it's really important that if we are pushing restorative justice for um, our schools and that we're saying like it needs to also be included in our in in the boards, you know, like it can just be like, this is what we are going to do for students when we in here don't have that same model. So I think like it's a really great way to show the community that, you know, when we are saying restorative justice, we're also applying it to the way that we interact with each other, uh, whether it's restorative or transformative justice. So I would like to spend some time on that and uh, look at some, um, yeah, guide some conversation, not me, but like, um, have the conversation around those three models and, and what is the model that we want to embody as a board and, and how, how do we, you know, look at those scenarios. So that's what I have. What's the... Thanks, Amanda. Sorry, you were saying something? Oh. Just, say, just, uh, thanks. just a question. What's the, what's the end goal um, of this uh, in terms of are we getting to a policy? Are we going to come up with a policy? Are we going to come up with a process? What's the end goal? I mean, I d no, I'm not trying to get the end goal is there's no conflict or we have a, you know, but <laughs> out of this process, like what are we trying to achieve um, at the end as a, I don't know, physical thing um, that we, we need to get out of this? Is that, are we talking a process document? Are we talking a policy document? Are we talking a combination of all of those? What are we talking about? Probably a process document. Okay. Yeah. It's curious. We have been talking about, um, in the policy committee, we've been talking about sort of the need of a document that um, describes how the board functions um, that would be user-friendly for both board members and people outside wanting to interact with the board. And so I could see this being part of that. Mm -hmm. We haven't 
made a lot of progress on that yet, but. <laughs> Yeah, I think at the end. Future of, goal. I think at the end of this, it, it is a policy or a, a process document. It was also one of the recommendations coming out of the school safety committee work that the district have a conflict resolution policy. But I don't. That's not what we're spending our time on with this specifically. Because yeah. this is about board communication, not how the district. Right. Um, the other thing it could be mentioned in there's a policy around like uh, board expectations. It could be mentioned in that policy or even attached as procedure mm -hmm. in that policy. Other questions or comments? What What are next steps? Like, so you're drafting, um, you know, you're sort of drafting this document. You're working with the Restorative Justice Center. Is there a, a meeting planned? You know, for all of us to sit down with them, or is it? It's just, just sort of more like drafting this document. Um, my hope was that we would get a little bit further before bringing them in if we needed to, and that the next step would be um, using feedback that we've gotten tonight. Jim and I would do a little bit more work ourselves and then use time for a more robust actual sort of like really what do we want this to look like? What do we want the outcome to actually look like? during the board retreat. Oh, okay. Just as a point of clarity, I made everybody a viewer instead of, except oh, for okay. Mia and Jim because we, like, should more people start commenting right. on this document, you break open meeting lines. So right, just as a, thank you. Just, just in case people are wondering why they can Other you can right individually on. send them to one of us. Okay. Right, yes, yeah. you yes. can send us but, a Sorry, I missed that. So you can individually send them, send comments to one of us. Oh, and Zach has, both of you. Right, and Zach has his hand up. Zach. Yeah, um, I apologize if this has been uh, talked about before, but are the student representatives, are we going to attend the board retreat, or is that something separate from our work? Um, you're absolutely welcome to, um, and we'd love to have you there, uh, but it's also going to be a day and towards the end of yeah. school, so if you have other commitments, you're certainly welcome to um, bow out, Merrick. So what really is the board retreat? Uh, we a nice you, prelude into the next party. Exactly. <laughs> is that where we're at? I think the word party. retreat is um, <laughs> it's a big word. Very loose. <laughs> it's a very big word as it implies yeah. to this. It's more it, like a basically just, meeting. It's, it's basically an extended meeting where we do a deep dive on <laughs> a couple of topics and sometimes we also do some sort of like yeah extended exercise to build camaraderie, get to know each other better, decide whether we're mountain lake people or beach people, those type of things. <laughs> okay. But I think you both should absolutely come if you have the time in yes. your schedule for sure. Yeah. I think that I think that sounds really interesting. Yeah. Actually. Is that facilitated? Sometimes we have sometimes yes, sometimes no. We we had our last in person board retreat was facilitated actually by Nathan. Um, Before that, now. No, we had a, we had a couple preview that were facilitated where we, we did line up on a, a, a mountain stream ocean. I bet you beach enjoyed spectrum. that. <laughs> I bet you really enjoyed that. That's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should know this, but is, is this open to public or is part of it's, those open to public? It's a it's a it's a notice meeting. Yes. Okay, so the the entire meeting is usually open yeah. to public. Okay. Yeah, which is another reason why it's loosely a retreat. Um, and, and generally, we have it here. We, we have it ventured <laughs> over to the historical museum. Which was nice. Which was nice. Um, we usually get lunch, so yeah. No, it's, it's a good kind of data to delve into something. Um, so delving into that, uh, I, mean, I think the two things we want to do, and, and we don't have to make final decisions is get some dates that, that work and some uh, topic ideas. Uh, yeah, obviously, you can decide anything, but for topics, I would suggest no more than kind of one or two main topics, and there can be some subtopics under it. Um, you know, and obviously, we have you know some things going on, like the visioning process that we may want to give thought to about, you know, how we want to how we want to engage that, and you know I think 
you know, what what we want to do with that and how we make sure that that uh, gets us the product that we want. Um, I would put a strong plug into spending at least some time on that. And then um, I know some people have brought up, you know, process concerns and things like, you know, as part of process looking at, you know, conflict resolution, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, other, other things that, that might come to mind. But, um, you know, keep, keeping the, the topics narrow and I think oftentimes forward focused um, are usually useful. Um, if fo we just go around, if folks have dates in June that they know are bad. Oh, June? Um, Sometimes in the past we've taken a board meeting and extended it. If that helps as a starting point. Do you know have what I mean? We've done that at night, it's usually the afternoon. Right, and then we can't go to the night meeting. We, we bring it earlier. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. After the 20th, I'm away. Okay. Um, the 15th. And in terms of time, um, we're talking four hours? Or what were we talking? We've done so 12. 12 <laughs> <laughs> Not overnight? In which case, we're not <laughs> canceling the evening meeting. We've done um, eight to eight. <laughs> usually about four to five. Okay. I mean, sometimes we'll do, you know, four and a half or five and have a like, half hour, 45 minute lunch in the middle. Okay. Um, you know, like a 10 to ten to two, three thing, 10 to three. Um, I mean, the week of the 13th is great for me. The week of the sixth, I have, the, the week of the 20th, they're good for me, but not for Emma. Um, the week of the sixth, I've got um, another uh, annual board meeting for work and then is this like a doodle we can do? Mm -hmm. I think it's a doodle. I mean, if there's just lots of time. I mean, we, we have a meeting on the 15th on Wednesday, so. And would we be looking at during the day, though? Is that what you're saying? We might do it. I mean, we don't want to sit here for four hours at night. And we do have a middle school tour that day from 4.30 to 6, so it would have to be prior to that. Yeah. I'm free. Wednesdays are bad for me. Okay. Yeah, I actually have my retreat for my job that day. <laughs> yeah. So why don't can we, we have... Do a, wait, can we do a Saturday? Um, I, I can't do Saturdays. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think doodle poll. So let's do doodle poll, but we already know the... the why don't we... Anna, why don't you stretch days on like the week of the 13th and maybe the week of this May, May 30th? May 30th. Because we have a board meeting on the 1st. Yeah, which I guess is the 31st, because the 30th is Memorial Day. June right, right. June. Are we talking about May or June? Well, We're talking we're about May. June and possibly that first week of June, which encompasses a day or two of May. Um, and I mean, if I'm the only person that can't make it in later June, feel free to look at dates in later June. Yeah, I think the later you get, the harder it'll be. I think yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'll be going for the first yeah. I'll have Anna and I can I, out a digital poll. Yeah, for and those yeah, two I weeks. look at your those two poll as well. Yeah. Can I ask a question about the themes? Um, just to add to that, I've just been thinking a lot about the budget process and creating a plan for that, uh, for community input. And I am wondering, just like, being able in that retreat to create a, a plan for next year of really starting our budget community input process um, really early and like really setting up the stage um, and creating some of the work plan around all of the different committees and how that stacks with each other. So there's more of a comprehensive plan for the year. And I'm not sure if that's for that retreat, but I really feel like we should be really thinking how the committees come together, how we push a vision together um, of our work together and how um, how we can layer the different roles that we have into, you know, like whether it's policy, what are like priorities for us in terms of this coming year, uh, whether it is like what the priorities for the equity committee, what are the priorities, so that we have a little more accountability about how committees come together and that we are able to also kind of give 
voice um, around some of the the committee's work. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to just plus one what Amanda just said and think even that to give, to be able to do that maybe we, the if we're thinking about like, what are we leaving the board retreat with? Some goals for the board for the year that we then can use to coordinate committee work. <clears throat> Um, and, and prioritize and, and prioritize and, and maybe prioritize. and maybe even those goals are not they might we may actually feel like they're when we leave they might might feel not that ambitious but just keeping in mind that we are still I feel like kind of getting our feet under us and that it could be a goal that our committee work is coordinated and prioritized next year but I think leaving the, the board retreat with some goals for the board that are in parallel, uh, my ideal would be in parallel with the goals the administration has that are so that we can be in support of the administration through the work that we do as a board. Um, I also think it might be great if individual committees could do a little bit of that goal work just if we're asking, if we're thinking about like goals for the equity committee or goals for the policy committee, I could see the policy committee being able to define some goals pretty quickly outside of the retreat so that we weren't taking retreat time because we all serve on multiple committees. So that would be maybe a time burglar. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. No, I like that idea. Um, other suggestions? Just thinking about the restorative justice piece, if this is going to become a part of our process in the event of conflict, is it possible for the board to, I don't know what it takes to become trained in this way of being, um, and I don't, I have not been trained or exposed to this way of being, I've heard about this and I've seen things about this, but is there, a, would, the, would it be, if we choose to have this as a way of dealing with conflicts, would it be possible for the board to have some kind of training some, at some point that board members, if they chose, could participate in um, it, it, so that we're up to speed on what this actually, what it actually looks like and how it works? I want to be exposed to, better exposed and better, better equipped to understand how it works. I don't have I don't have anything right now. I don't, I don't have the knowledge about it. I would like to. I don't know if. We could definitely look into some trainings on that. And that's another, I mean, as part of a like, year work plan, we might want to set up some parameters around the type of trainings we'd like to see and things we'd like to work on as a board. A training I have in mind that would kind of bring up the idea of being in parallel with administration. Um, and this is sort of a question for you, Libby. I know we've been talking a little bit about data. There might be like a new data platform kind of coming online, but I would love to kind of, if that's happening, understanding that platform and then just like the broader question of like, as a school board, what is our role in working with data? How do we work with data to produce you know meaningful work at board level? Um, so yeah, I put a, um, vote in for having some kind of training around data. I think connected to that for me, what would be helpful is, um, and it could be part of a work plan, is what data does the board want to see and when mm -hmm. you want to see it throughout yes. the year. Mm -hmm. So it's not me guessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. That would be great. This has partially come up in the superintendent evaluation tool that we've been trying to improve. And I don't know where the things that were, I don't know if, the, if all of the things that we're hoping necessarily should live there or might live somewhere else or, you know, might be just, might if that dovetails with how things get presented, I would like that tool to be effective for you, for everyone, but for you, and to be an effective tool for whomever the superintendent is. Uh, 
Um, as far as the vision committee work, the, the concept is that we have some of um, the data and reports back from the visioning committee around the time of this retreat to be able to look at it and think about it, and that then the future work of that committee after the date of the retreat-ish is more about drafting actual language around the vision and potentially a vision statement or... Is that is that right? Yeah, I think so. And I think yeah, another thing to think about is you know how does how do we want that vision statement to look? I mean, the the Montpelier district used to have ends, and the good thing about ends was ends was something that the superintendent could use to kind of bump decisions up against and say you know this is driving this priority, this is driving that priority, this is why we're doing this. You know the and. Yeah, I think that's helpful, and also, you know, we talk a lot about kind of district values and district vision, but point me to it. <laughs> like, we don't have it right, we don't have it there. So, um, you know, and, and those, I think we all have in our heads an idea what they are, and I think because we're a relatively like-minded community, we probably all have similar ideas, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping the visioning committee gets us something you know that is on paper that's agreed to that we can really point to and say yep when we say values yeah. like this is what we mean but we're not looking for anything polished by the time of this retreat no but i i, I think i think i'm hoping that we have enough that we can kind of look at it and and say is this on track is this yeah yeah, is Maybe this... Maybe help us figure out what our goals are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, is this the type of thing that we can build goals around? Is, is this going to be helpful, or do we need a bit of a... Do we need to nudge it in a certain direction, or...? So again, to be mindful of the, the sort of like four-hour block of time that we have, and I feel like that time goes by super quickly. Yes. Would it be possible to have the vision committee report out to us, like, the meeting prior to... No? Too, too tight? Like a whole report? Just sort of like a, this is what we're hearing. You know, here's where we're at. A preliminary. That's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, because I think, I, I don't know if it's the best use of the four-hour retreat time to bring to bring the vision committee in to report out to us. No, and I don't think we do that. But I think we take okay. what we have and look at it and kind of and do I, it. And I would like to, like, what we have, it would be great to report that out the meeting prior to the retreat instead of reporting it out at the retreat and using some of that. Because then we could have all of our four hours to sort of talk. We could still discuss what was presented to us. Anyway, if it's possible. And some of that might depend on when we have the retreat, too. I mean, yeah. if we have it you know, May 30th, we might get a very different yeah. right. answer that we have it you know, June 20th or June 19th. Okay. Amanda? Yeah, I wonder for the visioning committee, it will be helpful. You know, part of, part of when, when we do data analysis and things is it's making sure to know which are the voices that we're hearing from, you know, whether or not is, is the people that we're getting from the survey all have master's degree versus like we are looking at some of our data, population data in the district and seeing the representation from the different pieces that, you know, just like thinking about the affinity spaces and how I just want to make sure that when we do come up with a vision that we feel really confident that we have her from a lot of our folks that don't necessarily get involved in any of these processes through surveys or through whatnot and 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 how and I know that you know the visioning community is doing a great job but I but that might be a question that maybe we can there might be several questions that we can ask the vision committee to get us there because what I will um be afraid to see is like that we have this great work that doesn't include all the voices and obviously you know that is generally right now in COVID um, a lot of people are so burned out but yeah so I just want to make sure that when you know that we're not like looking at us like look you know that we are doing all of our work for our 80 percent and not for the all the communities that might need a little more support so 
uh, maybe there's a we can come up with some questions around that for the visioning committee so that it can inform some of the work that we'll be thinking about in terms of planning, in terms of figuring out ways to reach out to these communities and, and whatnot. So, well, I can say that Rhett and Sagey and Merrick's joint, correct me if I'm wrong, Nathan is putting a lot of focus on that work, and that's a major conversation every time we meet as a committee. Yeah, well, another thing that um, we might want to do, I would be credit for the suggestion that we talked about a little earlier as well. Um, we want to do kind of a second long meeting in August um, and either skip one or both of our July meetings because July is, I think, one, we could use a break, and two, people tend to scatter in July. Um, so we could kind of, you know, just have a, a check-in on where the visioning committee is as part of that retreat, just very short, like a little gut check, use it as a framing for, uh, for setting goals, and then come back and have a longer meeting in August where we really delve into the, what the visioning committee has, because hopefully they will be at a point where they've got something relatively solid. I think that that would be a much more productive, that would be productive, because I think that what's happening is we're getting, we're getting lots of data and all our energy and effort is going into getting it from as wide a variety of places as we can in person virtually in every fashion that we can possibly get it trying to figure out even what questions to ask and how to ha ask them has been evolving yeah. um, and it's a ton of information and a couple of loose themes are possible by you know may may 30th or whatever but more than that would be a, a, a very difficult. I think it's going to take two months just to go through what we've got, uh, and we could have something by the end of the summer, and that seems very reasonable and helpful. Does anyone not like that suggestion? I think okay. I just fully support the idea of letting that process really run its course yeah. and yeah. having as much space and breadth as it needs. And, so that by the time we're really kind of digging into it, that's it's as solid as it's going to get, and if that means maybe waiting until August, yeah. I completely support that. I think that's yeah. the right one. And I think loose themes will be very helpful. Yes. <laughs> so that would be great. Because the other thing that we're going to know is the places where we need to really work with the 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 people that are in our community that we haven't heard from yeah. as much as we would like to, and that yeah. is going to be a, a sort of second effort. Um, in addition to what we've done until up to that point, I think. So for the one in in June, thinking like a four hour uh, if we did say fifteen minutes on just a quick check where that loose themes from that from where the visioning committee is, then maybe an hour and a half or so on, on some process issues like the like conflict resolution and then uh, discussing some other just kind of you know maybe going over some of the models that that Amanda has proposed and to see if there's some process um, improvements and then two and a half hours on goal setting does that sound roughly like a a decent thing for the June meeting? Mm -hmm. I would also like to um, toss out the idea of doing some kind of getting to know each other. Yeah. Definitely don't need to find out if we're beach people or mountain stream people, but it is foundational to being able to do our work together, I think, to know each other. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So some time and space for that. Yeah, no, I think that's good. And um, Nathan had some good exercises that he used at our yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were good. previous retreat. Um, and who is going to facilitate? I'm not do sure we, if we need a facilitator. Um, do we want to assign some people to help facilitate some of the sections so that it's not just like, let's do this, and that way that person can be like, OK, here's what we need to get the goals, and, and just we do need to have some sort of structure about facilitating the process, because if not, we will be there. Yeah, I mean, I, not that's, that long. Yeah, I, I think if we're going to structure it around the committee work, we might want to Decide like committee chairs to report out, and then 
you know, kind of find some way to synthesize the conversation. And we could we could look at getting a facilitator too. Although sometimes just when we need to like sit down and set goals and have a you know a real deep conversation about that, um, suppose we just need to do that. I do like the idea of a facilitator just to keep us on track and. Uh, use some, you know, like kind of keep it lively and maybe pique our interest and attention spans. I don't know. I think I thought it was good with Nathan. I mean, and I think also if we present sort of a more clear, here's what we want to get out of this meeting. I don't feel like we presented that last time at the yep. retreat. So if we're like, this is these are our, our ends for this meeting. I think a facilitator would be able to um, bring us through that process in a way that might be more engaging than how we just sort of typically naturally do as a group. Yeah, no, we could definitely look into one. I think getting a facilitator that has some familiarity with the board is going to be able to get us focused quickly on what we need to do it is, is going to be important. But I think there are people out yeah. there. And there, there also could be like facilitated time and then sort of like yeah. We could let that person go, and we could have the last hour to ourselves or something. Yeah, and we could. Do, I mean, I, I was kind of thinking like we could do do kind of a getting to know your exercise before lunch too, which is a good mm -hmm. time to. Um, Food always helps. Yeah, and that that's kind of good unstructured time. And I I think if we if we write those ideas down, if somebody did it about <laughs> today about like here are some of the themes. Um, if we can find a facilitator, I think like there's a lot of a uh, of people here capable of being assigned one piece and making yeah. sure that there isn't a goal at the end of that section. Um, so, so that like we have a pro, you know, something at the end that can then easily be. We don't have to wait a long time to get it back. So. Okay, excellent. Um, good. Well, we'll put together a draft. We've got a few meetings, and we'll kind of refine it. We'll also look into facilitator idea. Um, any other questions or comments about retreat? Great. Thank you. No, it'll be fun. Looking forward to that. I like the August idea as well. Um, July dates. And are we okay not meeting in July? Is anyone? <laughs> Jill, don't get too excited. <laughs> when you Is said that, that I ruining thought. ruining anyone's summer? <laughs> yeah. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm and not going anywhere, but we have sometimes you can get people more coming. A long okay. meeting. Yeah, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, those aren't out yet anyway, right? No, right, that we're just waiting through for June. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're waiting for mm -hmm. us. Unless you need us in July. Maybe. And then yeah. you call on us and we will be there. Or I won't. Yeah, part of the country, so yeah, that works. <laughs> I like how I was like, we will be there. And That's right. Not, not me. Not me. Not me. <laughs> not, <laughs> don't call me. Um, uh, visioning committee member, we're, I have to look five minutes, we're pointing Can we, another student. Can yeah. Meg Vosian. Is it Meg yeah. Vosian? Oh, it's yeah. Meg. Yeah. Meg Vosian. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, my understanding is there is a vacancy of a yes. student role, and so I'd like to move that we appoint Meg Vosian as a student representative on the visioning committee. I would enthusiastically second that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Yeah. No. Jim, I have um, <laughs> I have a request that's out of order slightly because I came in late. Yes. But I just wanted to highlight something that was said in the superintendent's report. I don't need to edit it or revise it or anything, but I just want to thank Libby for highlighting um, the problem that our community and our schools are facing around rising COVID levels and then staffing shortages and substitute shortages. And just want to make sure that it's said out loud on, on this platform that we really, it sounds like we're in a pretty desperate situation for substitutes, and that's not a great um, 
you know, morale booster towards the end of the school year for our dedicated teaching staff that um, are struggling to, as I understand, sort of fill in some of those yeah, gaps internally themselves. too. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't feel right and it doesn't feel fair. And I know that we're sort of in this like really challenging place where we just don't, ha it's not like we have a bunch of subs that we just aren't calling. It sounds like we don't have the subs. <laughs> um, so if anyone is inclined to sign up to be a sub and has the availability that's out there listening on ORCA, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's just, um, it's not a super complicated process, right? Nope. And, um, and it, it's not terrible pay, and it's kind of a fun way to spend your day. And I know a lot of parents are desperate to get into the building and would love to, like, be in the building for the day. So if you're one of those people, then um, maybe consider signing up to be a sub. So thank you for highlighting that issue. Yeah, and it's, yeah. yeah no, thanks for bringing that up in my notes. It's a challenge in the district and statewide. And yep. We have to solve it. We have to figure it out for next year. It's not going away. Are you taking half day subs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We'll take any quarter days. <laughs> One hour <laughs> sub. I have this is a background check. It's just for patching it together. It's like four yeah. people for one room. That's what you do. Yeah. That raises a question for me. Like, if you're if you have the level three volunteer, you've already done the background check clearance. Would you be able to just, for no pay, volunteer to cover a shift? If it's just like one shift, you know, like I know that there's sometimes just like one block that needs to be covered or something. Is that something that you could? It's just hard. Parents could help do It's harder because you, you know it usually at, you know, 6.45, 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So it's, it'd be difficult to do it that way, but you could. Right, OK. Might be logistical challenges too, right? I'm trying to get. I'm sorry, anything Might be logistical challenges over there, right? Trying to get like for one block and mm -hmm. hunting volunteers. You know? Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. Related to um, the parents group for each of the schools has done a lot of um, stuff this week for Teacher Appreciation, Appreciation Week. week. So and thank you to all the. And we did candy today. Yeah, no, I think for everyone who contributed to that. We have sheet cakes coming out. Yes. Right. Shh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do people. Hey guys, I'm fading. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you, can, you can move to adjourn if oh, yeah, you, you want to desire. You got your mic back. I, uh, I move to adjourn. All in favor? Yeah. I'll second it. I'll second it. Yeah, I'll second it. What, what happens if we adjourn inappropriately? <laughs> and Amanda, I hope you feel better and thank you for keeping your germs at home and yes. may you get better soon. Yeah. Thanks, Amanda. Thank Thanks, Zach. Bye, Zach. Yeah, bye, Zach. Bye. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Bye. Bye. bye.